I decided to partner with the Township of Langley to use this demonstration home to teach other builders and realtors and inspectors and homeowners on what it takes to build to the step code to see the industry get better and to build better homes for less money is where my heart is at. The Township Langley's adoption of the step code has not changed how we build our homes because we typically build at a step three level already. So many of the techniques that we need to hit the step code, we've been doing that for years. Well, every home is modeled differently, but typically a step three house will have insulated concrete forms. We always put an HRV in. We're using good quality windows and we'll do something like exterior rigid insulation as well to create a better thermal break. It takes strong leadership from our site manager to make sure that all the trades are doing what they need to be doing to meet the step code we're aiming for. Clay has been using insulated concrete forms for quite a few years. This wall is between R25 and R28. What's cool is you don't have to strip these forms. They're, they're here. You've already got your stud wall and everything to hang your drip rock off of. You don't have bat insulation and poly and wood up against a wall that might be wet and cold. Your building science issues are gone when you use this. We're always concerned about air tightness, so it's critical that we meet with our energy advisor to start looking at our conceptual plans to make sure that we're not going to handcuff ourselves later on with a design that's going to be cost prohibitive to hit the step code. We're doing a blower door test. We're making the home as airtight as we can make it. Building airtight homes is definitely possible if you start with a plan, and it doesn't have to be expensive if you've thought it through. Fortunately, we were able to use the spray foam on this house. If you look at this house, it's got lots of intersecting walls, roofs, and every time you have one of those, it becomes more and more difficult to have a continuous air barrier. And I knew that if we were to bring spray foam all the way from the bottom, basically connecting it to the insulated concrete forms in the basement and bringing it up, and over the roof and back down to the concrete forms on the other side of the house, I know where my air barrier is. And it's really important to know where your air barrier is gonna be. So two and a half to three inches of this open cell spray foam is an air barrier. The studs are an air barrier, so you'll see caulking along each of the joints where they're ganked together. Basically from the, the spray foam connected to the plate, plate connected to the floor, and then on the underside of this, there's a gain spray foam. So it's sprayed to the underside of the plywood, so that's a continuous connection. In this case, this is over top of a garage. Our air barrier could have been the plywood, all sealed joints, but we've got spray foam to the underside. If you would have a look through this house, the equipment that you see in the attic would have taken probably a room at least this size out of the rest of the building area. And at today's prices for a building, that's tens of thousands of dollars of space. And when you, when you actually talk about the cost of doing something like this, whether it's spray foam or some other way, so that all of your equipment is inside the warm uh, conditioned space, when you, when you think about the investment of extra detailing, you need to look at the equation, you know, how much space did you did you manage to save or what other um, effects did it have on your budget? You lowered the cost of or the size of your heating units because you didn't need as much capacity because you've done a really good job on your air barrier and your thermal barrier. So one of the neat things about having a conditioned attic space, the outside of the roof basically is insulated thermally and it's got an air barrier and the orange that's an, a vapor retarder paint that's on there you don't see it on the walls because the drip rock is going to go on here and this insulation is all the way to the back side it's it's to the warm side of the the drip rock so the drip rock is going to get a primer anyways so there's no use in putting a primer here that's a vapor retarder and then half an inch later you've got the same thing most of the things that we're doing in construction already can be used and just tweaked a little bit with a little bit of extra material and maybe a little bit of attention to detail can make a very good air tight assembly. 
and especially pay attention to the way you're going to provide air to the house for the occupants. It's an absolute necessity these days, the way we build houses. In this house, we used for HRV, and I don't think you would get a step three or better house without having heat recovery on your fresh air coming in. A heat recovery ventilator is not that expensive. It's the ducting and the installation that costs quite a bit of money. So we added an extra HRV just to make the duct runs shorter, more efficient. BC homes, construction industry, we're leaders. Uh, across Canada, they are looking to what we are doing in BC. So I'm very excited to be building to the energy step code. Our homes are getting more efficient, they're healthier, they're more comfortable. We have a lot to be excited about in the construction industry and what our homes are gonna look like in the future.